Hello and welcome to another Notch tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be adding and texturing a 3D mesh in a Notch scene. Let's start by importing a 3D mesh into the Resources window. We're going to right click in the Resources window, add a 3D object, and navigate my way to the mesh I want to import. Once my 3D object is in the resources window, I'm going to drag it in to the node graph and connect it to the root node. To connect it to the root node, I just click on the root node and drag and click it into the top of the node of the 3D object. I'm now going to add a skylight into the scene. So you go to your nodes, you type sky, and anything with sky in it will come up. There's the skylight, drag the node in, and I'll hook it into the root node. Now there's another way I can do this, which is a little quicker, which is control R to hook it directly to the root node. And as you can see, there is now a line going from the root node into the top of the skylight node. In the viewport window, you can see that the camera has now disappeared. Uh, that must mean something's not working because the skylight is also hatched out. So what you need to do is enable deferred rendering, high dynamic range, anti-aliasing and linear space lighting. I'm now going to add another 3D mesh resource, which is the floor. I'll add that to the scene so that the camera's sitting on something solid. Bring that in. I'm going to hit Control R to connect it to the root node. So there you go. Now I have the camera sitting on the floor with just one skylight. So if you go to your nodes, type in matte, you can see the material comes up. Add a material node and you hook the end of that into one of these material slots. And I'm going to add it into the metal material slot. So when you add a material, you end up with all these parameters. Um, your textures will go in here. Color texture is an albedo texture or a diffuse map. You have a normal map, specular map. Your diffuse map is actually your ambient occlusion map. If you have one of those, it is best putting it on a separate UV channel. Um, all of these textures will default to UV zero or the first UV channel. The diffuse map will be on the second UV channel. So you'll need two sets of UVs on this asset. Uh, this is so that you can render that out in your preferred 3D package. So the first thing to do with the materials is to import some textures. I right, go to import resource in the resources window and you have image. I'll import a diffuse map. I'm going to speed this section of the video up. This is where I'm adding the rest of the textures to the material. So I'll import in a normal map, a specular map, a diffuse map, which is actually the ambient occlusion map, a roughness map, and a metallic map. Now, there are several ways you can do this. You can import them in through the resources window by right clicking in it, or you can drag and drop the textures straight out of a Windows folder. If you double click on the material node, you will get a little thumbnail of the actual material itself. I've got my first material on the scene. I've added some textures and it's still looking pretty flat. So the scene needs some more lighting information. So what I'm going to do to make the materials work better is add an environment map to the scene. Now I can hit Control R and this will be connected up to the root node. 
Now immediately you're saying nothing's happened. What you need to do is bring in an HDR image for the environment map to work. So I'm going to go up to my resources window, right click, add an image, and in here I will have a HDR image. I'll select the HDR image, go to my environment map and scroll down to where it is. That HDR image is now in my environment map. Again, nothing is happening. So what we need to do is go back to our material and enable environment mapping on the actual material. I'm going to speed this section of the video up. I'm going to add a skybox to the scene. I'm going to plug the environment map into the skybox and the skylight. Skylight will use the information from the environment map to light the scene. I'm going to add a point cache node and a voxel cone lighting node to the scene. The point cache will generate points throughout the scene on the objects to calculate the lighting and the voxel cone lighting will utilize this. I'm also going to add screen space reflections node to the scene as well as a temporal anti-aliasing. I'm going to connect the environment map to the screen space reflections node so that I can control everything through the reflections node. I've also used an auto bounding box or the voxel cone lighting node and the point cache node. The auto bounding box will generate a bounding box for both these nodes. I'm also going to generate an ambient occlusion map for the ground plane. This will be added to the ground planes material. I'm doing this so that I can ground the camera to the floor with a bit of shadowing. The ambient occlusion map was generated in 3D Studio Max using V-Ray. You can use whatever 3D package you like to do this. I'm going to spend a few minutes just polishing the materials and getting all the lighting working. So as you can see, I've now set up the lighting and it seems to be working okay. What I have to do now is add some new materials to all the other parts of the camera. So I'll start off by adding a new material to the lens. So I'll go to materials, drag over a material slot, double click holding shift so I can see what the material looks like and then drag that into the lens part of my mesh. So obviously the lens is transparent so we go up to opaque and make this an alpha blended material. Immediately you can see that it's gone transparent but there are no reflections so we want to add some reflections to this. I'll make it full metal, turn down the roughness to zero, and now we want to increase the specular. So at the moment it's 0.4, we would like to increase this to way beyond that, probably 20, maybe even more than that, 50. You can see the uh, reflections now starting to work on the lens. I'm also going to turn down the, the amount of alpha in the actual object so that we can see through it. So I'm going to put that on about 0.7. Now you can see through it, but it's also toned the reflection down slightly. So I am going to increase the specular to accommodate for that. I'll probably try 100. Yep, that seems to be working nicely. Um, I'm going to add a bit of rim lighting to that just to pop it out around the edges. So I'm going to enable rim lighting. And here's the rim lighting color.
I'm going to make that a sort of dark green color. I'll do and just darken it down slightly. So I want the fall off on this rim lighting to be uh, quite high. I want the intensity of this rim lighting to be quite high, so I want that around 10. And I want the fall off to be quite sharp to give you a, a nice edge to it, say maybe 15. See if I do that, you can see the rim light coming in. So I'm going to reduce it right down. That's probably quite good there. So, got some nice reflections on the lens. Uh, I think I also want to change the color of the lens slightly. At the moment, it's white. I'm going to turn that to green as well, just just to get that sort of uh, authentic look. It's going to be a sort of bluey green color. I'll speed this part of the video up just so that I can get the reflections on the front lens working properly. I'm going to do the same with the inner lens. Now, the quickest way to do something like this is just to copy and paste the first material. It saves you redoing it. It will keep a lot of the parameters there, and then it's just a case of changing the colors so that they uh, work better. I think I'm going to make this a sort of purpley, dark blue color. So hook your new material up to your slot. And you can see immediately that it's transparent and you can see right through your objects. Now this lens doesn't need to be transparent. So I'm going to make it opaque, but I want it to stand out from the other lens. So I'm going to make it a slightly different color. Sped this part of the video up. I'm just trying to uh, get the textures to work, working on getting the lens to reflect properly. I'm also going to look at getting the plastic to uh, reflect a bit better at the moment. It's not reflecting the light very well. So I've increased the specularity on this material. I've also increased the normal map strength so that you get a better sort of normal map response. You can see all these uh, lines are now being uh, coming out a lot stronger now. I think that's a good sort of material response on that plastic now. One thing to note, I could have used one material for the whole asset. Instead, I've split the different material types into separate materials. It just makes it a lot easier to edit the different materials, put different specular responses on them, different material responses on them. I can dial up the roughness on the rubbers. It's a lot easier to handle. So it worked very well for this scene. I'll just spend some time tidying up the materials and then we'll set some cameras up in the scene. going to put some cameras in the scene, add a little depth of field to them, make the scene look a little nicer and that should be the end of the tutorial. Thanks for watching and look forward to seeing you in the next Notch video.